Hello, my name is uh, Clive Scott and this is part 17 of a course on Java and um, it's called a second look at classes and um, I'm covering things like um, access, overriding and hiding and uh, quite a few other things so this is, uh, this is this one's quite long okay this is the uh, uh, contents of what we're uh, going to cover um, uh, what we're going to do including things like uh, multiple inheritance um, why that's a problem for some languages and uh, how Java avoids that problem. Um, uh, all of these things down here are connected in some way or other to overriding. Um, uh, we'll also cover things like um, access qualifiers including this one protected access which uh, a lot of people get wrong because it's quite subtle. Um, um, what else? So I'll also give a, a some sort of very crude view of the virtual machine, so you get some idea of how that handles overriding. And um, we see implicit interface uh, uh, members. Um, that's something which isn't really covered very well by a lot of books. They don't even mention it. Some of them. Um, uh, finally, um, I'll just give a quick preview of overloading. I was going to include that um, in uh, this lecture here, but it um, it would have pushed the time up too long as it stands at the moment. This thing looks like it's going to run over two hours. So um, I've just given a quick preview there, and we cover it properly in the next uh, the next lecture. Uh, the first thing to talk about is uh, abstract classes and um, so the question is what's an abstract class? Well, um, uh, the thing about an abstract class is just like an ordinary class it, um, except uh, um, uh, you don't have to fill in the uh, body for every single method and um, uh, you can leave it to subclasses of that class to fill in um, the bodies. What we actually mean is um, implement it, just like uh, in an interface. And um, in fact, it's, these are a bit like an interface, except you can have um, uh, real methods in there, perfectly ordinary methods, as well as what's called abstract methods. And uh, that's what an abstract class is. And um, uh, the important thing about an abstract class is that you can't instantiate it. That means you can't do new on it to get a new object from it and um, it has to be marked as abstract by preceding it with um, this keyword abstract and um, any um, method in the uh, class as well has if it's not got a, a body it has, it's got to be preceded with a keyword abstract okay so what's it used for well um, here's an example um, uh, supposing you've got um, a program for drawing shapes and um, supposing it can draw um, circles, rectangles, triangles, whatever, you know. And um, if you think about that, um, if you have a class for each type of shape that gets drawn, then um, some of the behavior is going to be common to all types of shape. For example, they're all going to have a, a draw um, method to draw themselves and perhaps a resize as well whatever, I mean you can imagine things and um, some of the state information is going to be common as well to all the shapes for example they're, they're all going to have um, say um, a colour uh, the colour in which to draw the shape and maybe um, something like line thickness and the style of line and that sort of thing going to be, they're all, all the classes are going to have that as a, as a, um, um, a field and um, uh, of course some of the things are going to be specific to each shape only circles will have a radius field for example um, and uh, all this is a good, a good candidate for um, what's called an abstract class called shape so we have it up here and we um, uh, inherit all of them inherit from this class okay and I'll just show you what uh, that looks like uh, in uh, programming terms. 
Uh, well, this is what it looks like in programming terms. Um, got this class shape here, and uh, that's an abstract class. You've got to have this word abstract in front. And it's uh, an abstract class because it's got this abstract method in it. And uh, that looks just as if it had uh, come out of an interface. So there's no sort of body there, just ends in a semicolon. And um, it's got to have the word abstract in front. Now, these are just ordinary methods. And uh, that's uh, just as you'd expect, just a perfectly normal looking class apart from that. And this is a both abstract. Okay, this is um, class circle and um, um, uh, rectangle and um, triangle and whatever else I'd thought of. That will also look pretty similar to this. So you have a class for that, um, an extends shape, and uh, it's got to have a draw shape in it corresponding to that abstract method. And uh, there's just a reconstructor. Okay, so that's what they're all going to look like, and um, this is where it uh, starts to pay dividends. Um, uh, shape, of course, is just an ordinary class, apart from being abstract, so you can certainly define an array of it. And uh, here I'm putting some stuff into that array, a new circle, new, I don't know, triangle, uh, I don't know, use your imagination. And um, here I'm going through the class using the enhanced, this um, array rather, using the um, enhanced for loop and uh, printing out, drawing each of the shapes in there. And uh, you'll notice that um, I've not had to refer to what class. Um, that S happens to be. I haven't got a now where have I said is S instance of circle then draw this or whatever. Um, it uh, works independent of that. And uh, this this um, type of behaviour is called polymorphism. And uh, polymorphism is uh, from a sort of Greek word, and it means many forms. And what this really boils down to is basically um, a method, in this case draw shape, can do different things based on the class of the object. So in this case the class of the object is determined by S, whatever S happens to be. So if S is a circle it will call this version of draw shape. If it's a triangle or something it will call the draw shape that's in the class triangle. And um, you can think of this in um, Sort of, it's behaving sort of like it would do if shape was an interface, really. Um, it's just resorting to whatever, whatever um, class ha uh, S happens to, uh, whatever class S happens to refer to. It's that version that gets called by draw shape. Now, um, one of the big advantages of this, of course, is that um, you can extend this very easily. This mechanism. So, supposing you've got um, something like um, ellipse, say, and you want to draw ellipses everywhere. Uh, all you have to do is create a class ellipse and extend shape and put a draw method in in a constructor and you're away. There's nothing else you have to change. This all doesn't change at all, this bit of code here. And um, that's one of the advantages of polymorphism.